Alright guys, welcome back to Quadratic. Today on the shelf we have another mini multi-rotor. This is the awesome F100. And we're going to find out if it really is awesome. I do like the brand awesome. Uh, they're starting to branch out and be, uh, build some uh, pretty good quads. They uh, actually did this one. That was the one with the bent arms, if you've been around long enough to remember that. And when you put the straight arms on that, that one really was uh, quite fast and quite impressive. So we're going to see if this mini quad can hold up to some of the likes of the other ones that we've got on the wall. So let's go ahead, put it on the bench and take a look and then we'll do a test flight. So this is a sleek quad with some nice machine cut purple aluminium on the side there, really giving it a bit of an edge. And it looks really nice. It retails at about £90, which is about $120, which I think is probably a little bit expensive for me personally, given um, sort of the uh, specs of this. But we're going to go into that um, a little bit later, dive into that and see just how it flies and if it is worth that money. So, as usual from Awesome, we've got a pretty nice looking sleek case where this all comes in, uh, rather than just a pretty little crappy cardboard one that usually comes with uh, sort of the ones you get off uh, Gearbest and Banggood. And so, opening up, you'll see we've got a uh, manual with some of it, well, the top bit's in Chinese, but most of it is in English, so this is going to be quite useful. Uh, they've got an English translation on here. They're telling us um, sort of all these settings, how to set it up as well. This is how to set up the um, video transmitter, even the motor directions on here which is quite useful um, and then there's obviously different versions of mini rotors that quad um, that awesome are putting out so inside of course we've got the quad itself we'll come to that in a minute we've also got two packs of uh, four bladed nice purple propellers and these are two inches so 2035 and they look to me exactly like uh, the gem fan ones so I think these are either gem fan or a ripoff of a gem fan uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if they are exactly identical to those which is really nice because a lot of these ship with uh, three bladed propellers which I then upgrade to four bladed and I usually when I'm using mini multi rotors I usually upgrade to these gem fan ones anyway because I think they're pretty decent so it's nice to see that we probably won't have to upgrade the motors um, the propellers sorry straight out the box as we usually do with mini multi rotors like this we've also got uh, four propeller guards because this is a mini quad you might want to be flying it indoors but without risking crashing into anything or scratching off some paint so that's useful to have have those but we probably won't fly with those this uh, is a bind and fly version uh, you all can also have a plug and play and they've also given us um what looks to be uh, a receiver if you do want the plug and play so then you can simply wire this up to your receiver um, and then plug that straight into the quad which is a nice touch so we don't have to we have to supply our own receiver obviously but if you're running short on wires uh, we've got a spare wire in there underneath here we've also got some spare bolts probably to put the um uh, propeller guards on there and we've also got a battery this is a little 500 milliamp hour unfortunately it's only 2s um, I'll go a little bit closer on that um, it's only 2s 25c um, but you know hopefully this is going to be providing enough power um, to give us quite a bit of a kick on here would have liked to see a 3s most of the mini quads nowadays seem to be coming out with 3s so this is sort of um, another reason why I'm a little bit skeptical about the price but of course you could uh, try upgrading yourself to 3s and see if that'll work. Um, I'll probably see if I can do a bit of that in the video, uh, upgrading to 3S. So anyway, let's take a look at the quad itself. Like I mentioned, nice sleek design, just the mini version of the F200, uh, and we've got some awesome branded uh, machine cut aluminium on here, which is a really nice touch. So taking a look, it's nice and purple. You can only get this in purple. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at the motors first. Of course, these are awesome branded. They do like to produce a lot of their own stuff. And these are, as you'll be able to see, 7500 kV 1103 motors so pretty standard 1103 um, on these quads of these size however you will notice that at the front here they are actually uh, pluggable motors they just plug into the uh, ESCs so if you do uh, go ahead and blow one of these or you want a replacement you know nice and easy to go in there if you've not got much experience with soldering you don't need to take this whole quad apart you don't need to go ahead and solder things you can just simply plug and play the motors which is quite nice and uh, that's quite a nice touch, I think. 
So you'll see we've got these big standoff feet on here, um, which is probably just uh, give it a little bit of uh, leeway on the battery with the battery underneath here. Probably make that not hit the ground, which I think is always a good idea because when you land, obviously you're uh, gonna, if you, especially if you're gonna land on something hard, you've always got the chance that you might pop the battery, uh, you might pierce it, and um, you know could eventually explode, which is not good. So standoffs like this is quite good for when you're landing, uh, or at least when you're landing properly, maybe not crashing. So taking a closer look, we've got a double stack on the bottom here, and you'll be able to see uh, where we connected the ES, the motors. Uh, this is the four-in-one ESC at the bottom. This is 10 amps, which you know is is enough. It's not it's not massive. We've seen bigger, but you know this should be able to handle probably handle 3S um, and maybe pack a punch because this thing is seriously light. Uh, but it does feel very sturdy, you know, with this aluminium on the sides here and uh, this carbon fiber as well. Um, so it does feel quite sturdy. However, it is very light, but it. Does does not feel tacky which is always a good thing so for in one 10 amp esc on the bottom um this sports obviously d shot 600 uh, all the latest things on there and then on the top we've got the flight controller this is actually an omnibus and it's an f3 so it's not the latest it's not an f4 um but it is um you know pretty decent and it's got an integrated if i go around the side here you might be able to see uh, here we've got um what looks like sort of glued on um the video transmitter uh, and this is the antenna as well on there you'll notice um so that's quite good that's 48 channels i believe um so we've got quite uh, a lot on there with race band as well um and that's going to be uh with an on-screen display as well we've got a beta flight on-screen display built into here um which is always a nice touch so you know pretty standard nothing to shout about on here this is only a 25 milliwatt uh video transmitter as well and there's no option for switching as well as we can usually you know might be able to have a, a switchable between 25 and maybe 100 or 200 on micro quads like this so again another slight drawback is that we've got quite a low uh, video frequency power as well um, which you know that's just going to reduce the range reduce sort of the um, amount that you can cover up you know fly behind trees and stuff so a bit of a drawback i would have liked to see maybe a switchable or maybe just a standard 100 milliwatt on there uh, but nevertheless we're going to give it a fly because awesome even though sometimes they're not the leading edge they do seem to produce quite nice quads so this could still be pretty decent uh, nevertheless of the these drawbacks on the front we're looking at a 600 tvl cmos camera um you know pretty standard again you know we've seen up to maybe 800 or more uh, on quads of this size so you know might be a little bit lacking uh, on the camera quality on this maybe a little bit pixelated not the best quality uh, but again we're gonna have to go ahead and try that out but of course you know this is um you know pretty pretty steady you might be able to whack a sort of very tiny mini cam uh, or even replace the camera on here because i do like the frame uh, and the design of this so it is pretty decent anyway i think that's covered pretty much everything that there is to say about the specs on this um you know pretty minimalist quad not a massive amount packed in here and like i mentioned not amazing specs nothing to blow you out of the water nothing to really catch your eye but nevertheless it could be really quite a good flyer so we're going to go ahead uh, maybe do an indoor test i'll see if it's uh, a bit too powerful or maybe it might be sort of um you know tame enough to fly indoors and then we'll probably go ahead and see if we can fit a 3s i'll see if i've got a small enough and light enough 3s to put on here as well uh, and see if we can go ahead and pack a bit more of a punch in this so anyway let's go check it out and give it a flight okay so here is some flight footage and as you can see from that volt meter on the bottom left this is only on the supplied 2s i do test it on 3s but a little bit later and you can tell it's a little bit sloppy um it's not amazing it's not really responsive it's got quite a slow punch out as well but you know you can still have fun on this and you can tell straight away there does seem to be a bit of an issue with the camera quality this does correct itself in a minute but i'm not quite sure what's going on apologies for the blackouts i was recording this on my old uh vrd2s so obviously they've got the issue of the blackout when you lose collection um but you'll be able to see here something goes wrong and then for some reason the camera quality kicks back in and it's a lot brighter and a lot better colors i don't know whether that was the recording or whether that's just the camera itself and the bad lighting uh, i'm not sure but going over the trees here i do lose quite a little bit of connection you can see because um obviously you don't see those black bits when you're viewing it you know you can still fly still make it through the trees but um 
be aware that you are going to get quite a bit of interference with this because, like I said, it is only 25 milliwatts. So, a bit of fun, you know, big enough to fly around this little uh, bit of grass, but nothing, you know, amazing. You can see I flew down um, and then tried to punch out a little bit there and it didn't work. This is testing it on 3S now, as you'll be able to see. The camera quality seems to be fine from the start this time, and this is a lot punchier. Um, the 3S battery I'm using is probably a little bit too heavy for this, but it is still really, really nice. You've got a lot of punch out on this, uh, and it does seem to be quite a bit faster and more responsive, even if it does seem to be weighed down a little bit because of that heavy battery. So I'd probably suggest getting sort of um, a 3S battery with a similar or maybe a little bit more weight uh, than the original one, whereas this one is probably too big to fly with the one that I'm using. So if you do get a decent lightweight 3S battery, uh, then that will be a good flight. So all in all, quite enjoyable, but like I said from the start, nothing amazing with these pretty um, average specs. So anyway guys, thanks for checking this out. Don't forget to use the code in the description if you want a discount, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.